Today, the first preview of Visual Studio 2026 came out. I already had the chance to test this new version a few weeks beforehand and I'm really happy with all the different quality of life updates this update brings. This video covers most of the new features, so let's start right into it. The completely new icon and splash screen are the first thing that catches your eye. The second thing is the completely new design for the start window, which gives a fresh new look. The whole UI was updated to match the fluent design guidelines that makes the whole thing look way cleaner. Furthermore, 11 new tinted themes were added that resonate with the new theme changes. Plus, many of the icons were updated too. The new options that replace the old settings dialog, which was previously in preview, is now the new default experience. All newly added toggles can no longer be found in the old experience. The editor's window footer menu is now fully customizable. With a right click on this button bar, you can select which information you want to have displayed. A new element in this button bar is the encoding display. With a click on it, you can even convert the file to another char set. The class view window got a new search bar that allows searching for substrings. The profiler has a new launch page with a better overview of all the tools. Pull request comments are now directly in line, just as in Visual Studio Code. They also render markdown correctly, which is pretty neat in my opinion. Hot Reloading was also not spared of quality of life updates. Hot Reloading is now also supported if you rename a file, use lambdas with default parameter values and if you edit the new property accessors with the field keyword. If Hot Reloading still encounters a change that cannot be Hot Reloaded, you can now automatically restart your application with the new Hot Reload Auto Start property in your project settings. Furthermore, Hot Reloading Razor files got a lot of performance improvements. Different debug tools like the CPU Usage Renewal are now available for CMake projects without any extra setup needed. When a function is called while debugging, you can now see its result directly in line without having to step into the function call. The text visualizer now allows you to search for content in its window. The new Copilot Adaptive Paste feature allows to automatically change your code after you pasted it so it conforms to the code around it. Sadly for this video I was not able to get it to work but when trying the whole thing out it triggered a few times and I always found it very useful. When you select a piece of code in the editor a new Copilot Actions menu allows you to execute simple actions with one click like explain the code or generate tests for the selected code. The new did you mean feature allows you to input a term into the feature circle window and the copilot automatically su suggests relevant results. Copilot chat can now use websites if you paste links into the chat window so you can provide more context for answers. All in all, the capabilities and the consistency of Copilot in Visual Studio improved a lot. I was really impressed by how good it sometimes worked. One such capability is that you can now reference your Git changes directly in the Copilot chat window with the hashtag changes directive. You can also reference a specific commit with hashtag commit. For quick find and find and replace, you can now specify global exclusion patterns that apply to all searches over all projects. Mermaid diagram files can now be displayed inside Visual Studio when using the Markdown Editor. The new Benchmark.net project template provides a built-in scaffold for projects that measure benchmarks. The C++ project templates 
now use C++20 by default. C++ attributes now have proper highlighting in the source code. The code coverage feature, which was previously only available for Visual Studio Enterprise, is now also available in the Community Edition. And the last thing, the new SLN X format is the new default format for Visual Studio solutions. The whole thing is just in preview for now, so if you encounter a problem, report it over the report a problem button in the top right hand corner. Like for example what I encountered, I was not able to use the code duplication feature on some projects because it crashed Visual Studio. That's all for now. Please leave a like if you learned something in this video and subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss weekly updates for everything developer related. See you next time.